Bifoliates, Catley Alliance equals Divas. Definitely Divas of the Catley Alliance. Especially when it comes to repotting. Notorious for dumping their roots. Notorious for throwing a fit if it's not done their way at the right time. So this is my Rinko Catlianthi Fushu Glory Happy Holiday, allegedly. And I say that because it's from Schwerter. And we've been there, we've done that, got the t-shirt and discarded that t-shirt. But anyway, here's an issue. I have been watching carefully to see when new roots are growing. When can I intervene? And the time is now because new roots are growing. And I want to intervene because of this growth. Looks a bit weird, doesn't it? Big, fat, chubby sheath. Uh, stunted growth. Funky, thick leaf as opposed to thin leaf, although it is solid in texture. This one is odd. Now up here there is already a crack, so I'm not going to snip it. I'm going to see what it does all of its own accord. If I snip it, I will let you know. But more importantly, when I filled this up to soak it with some of the fertilized water before getting it out of the pot, it gargled. That's great. For me, that's a sign that there is still oxygen in the pot. I don't know about the health of the root system though. This is a little bit bizarre. So we're gonna go have a look. We've looked at a few others and I've held off on bifoliates because I've been waiting for the right time. I do not need to impose any more issues if it already has issues. I'll get you on the tripod and let's have a look. Thank you for joining me. Really appreciate it that you took the time to click on this video. I have been busy, busy with my collection. I have not filmed everything, just some areas where I thought could be of interest. It is still a bit breezy today, but I don't think it's gonna be as troublesome as the last time because the last time I thought I, I should film this because it could be of interest. And hence with the wind and everything, oh well, I just hope that it was somewhat acceptable feasible. Right. Pouring out. Sorry about that, but I was pouring out against their roots, the new root growth, in the opposite direction. And let's see if I can just pull her out or if she is holding on tight. It seems she is holding on tight. So let's give her a little bit of a... Oh my gosh. I think I've lost the strength to squeeze. All right, we'll start where it's easiest on the top and work our way down. Now with the squeezing, I always say, yeah, squeeze the pot to dislodge roots. But also with Lekka, when it becomes a big solid mass, don't think that you're not actually cracking roots while you're squeezing because you're actually pushing them up against each other with this hard surface. So I always try to bear that in mind and not go all ninja on squeezing roots. I go gently around one by one, you know, moving the lecker a little bit at a time because all this is affecting roots as we speak. And once we're past this phase, we're okay. We need to be a bit careful. It's not, it's not that simple or easy of a growing method to excuse any other cautions we would normally take. Yep. Watch it against the root growth. All right, let's grab the biggest part and see if we can coax her out. That one's loose. Come on, you know you want to. <laughs> Here we go. Ooh, 
you can see the microfibers coming up with it. Okay, there we are. I would say that is, that looks decent. I'm gonna take this out because I do want to replace it. Yeah, that's a decent root system, two years in this growing method. And as I said before, it gargled when I poured water in. That to me is a great sign regarding how much oxygen is actually in the pot. In my previous video, I showed a pot or two that actually didn't do anything, didn't absorb any of the liquid as I was pouring it in. It just filled up and stayed. So that pot was serious. Both of them were seriously full. Right, I have work to do. And yes, this looks aggressive and normally I would go horror shock because I do freak out if I break a surface root, but it's all down here and I shall be taking care of this root ball anyway. So that's okay, that's okay. I have these wonderful roots growing here. Let me get a little close up. You see, I have wonderful roots growing. So I can, and I will, clean this up nicely for the next two years. I'll be back when I've gotten somewhere. So the root ball actually, as I'm working on this, is looking quite good, quite healthy. Maybe it was a fertilizer thing, why this growth turned out funky because there's nothing wrong in the pot. And I also wanted to show you that last year I bumped it up and didn't clean it up. So you can see how the root ball, the first root ball was right up against the pot, sort of the perimeter. I don't know if it's very obvious on camera there. You can see how that was filling up. And then I bumped it up to a bigger pot and that is what we are working with now. And I do not at this point intend to even go beyond that because two years, even the inner root ball is absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with what I'm seeing here after two years, bifolia cattleya. You can see the two separations there from one pot to the next. So this was an up pot with a Definite, definite success. But I'm gonna clean up the bottom. I'm taking off, trimming off like the stringy roots right there, the dark roots right there, and then whatever I can get into in the middle if it's compromised as you can see in there, that's what I'm working with right now. So I'll be back. So how am I doing here? <clears throat> Let me show you because it looks like I'm really cutting away good roots only. And I'm not complaining. This is a luxury when it comes to repotting orchids, being able to be a little bit more dramatic, but I wanted to show you something. And that is what I'm looking at. I'm not just going willy nilly chopping away on roots. Let's see, there. Here is an example of what I'm also looking for. If there's a brown bit, another brown bit, and it's kind of wobbly like that. See how that sort of wobbles? There's no, nothing firm about it. I take that off as well. And the root is absolutely fine. So I'm really enjoying the luxury of being able to rejuvenate this root bowl by being a little bit more picky about one good root from the other. Here's a classic example. Another one. I mean, try not to lose the lacquer balls. All right, where was it? Right here. So you can see how this root is dried off at the tip. It's a healthy root, but it's wobbly and branching. I'm taking that off. And that's where I'm at right now, and we're looking close to being where we want to be. And I'm actually quite fine with that. Here's another one right here that I'm threading my way through. I'm gonna get this out as well. 
It's a bit of a painstaking procedure, but with a little bit of, you know, fiddle, it's fine. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to try and film this. I always say I fiddle my way through. Well, if you want to join me on fiddling, then here we go. This is the one in question, and I'm gonna take it out from underneath there. I always work with closed clippers. I don't want to accidentally cut something that is meant to stay on. So I press down gently and then lift up. And here it is caught under another root, which I lift up. And then I work my way up the root, the offending root, and slowly get to where it was attached, which sometimes I cut off before I start and sometimes I leave on because I'm not sure of where the end of it actually is. So this one is still threading its way underneath. And I lift the one on top off because it's fine. If I can still tease my way in further, I pinch off a bit of Lekka just to help me a little bit. I never go in with open clippers. I'm always closed clippers. Here's another one. Let's wedge the Lekka bead down and out. And this one is okay. I want to get at this one right here. And unless I undo this whole area, I won't get at it. But in this case, because it's a branch, I can just snip it off at the base of where it was branching. And that is what I do. Black tip off. This one is fine, even though it has a black tip. I've already rejuvenated it. This one's a bit wobbly, don't like it. Black tip, black tip, black tip. And that is what I do. And then I really take the jet as, as strong as possible and flush out maybe some debris that I can still get rid of without putting my clumsy hands in or spaces where my tweezers just won't fit. And I just flush the whole root ball out as best as I can. And then we're about done. But here, right here, I'm seeing a wobbly bit. And I just want to address that. It's wobbly just because of the Lekka or is it wobbly because it's compromised? And there is a black bit there, right there. So it's coming off right above the kink. So that's what I do, painstaking, slowly, slowly. And that's why I only do three a day. In case I come across something like this, then I don't get impatient, I don't get flustered or tired. And it also gives me some good clean lacquer that I can reuse, no problems. A little bit of time here. I'm standing outside in the gorgeous breeze. I mean, what's not to like with a bifoliate root ball that actually didn't need messing with because it was still super healthy. But because the growth had me wondering, here I am now just enjoying this time with my orchid and then she'll be all right for maybe another year, maybe two years, we shall see. We shall see how long this process lasts and then I have to look at what I'm doing regarding fertilizing for next year. Maybe 300 ppm is not enough. And that's why she has this funky looking growth. And that's all I'm going to do with this one. I'm going to pot her up right now and hope. And then you can, you know, I can fuss around for hours. I just saw another piece that was a bit dark. Isn't anymore as it's off. This one is wobbly. I can fuss around this now for a long time. 
new root, no biggie, lots of new roots coming. We've got backup and we've got plenty of roots in the pot. I didn't want to cut this one, but I've damaged it, so off it goes. And round and round we go. But you see, this can, this can go on for hours, but I'm not going to because enough is enough. It is a bifoliate, it is a diva. And I think I've pushed my luck and I'm not going to tempt fate. I want her to do well. If she decides to bloom, it should be interesting to see what bloom comes out of it with that funky, funky sheath. Yeah, I'm gonna pot her up now. And this is the only lecker now that I have to clean up, which is great. Alrighty, all packed up in her cleaned out pot and uh, hopefully ready to grow. Now, what can we expect? There's two things I think we can expect from this repotting. She's going to dump all the roots that were just messed with and exposed and fiddled around with. And okay, so be it. Dump the roots if you wish, because you've got more roots coming. That's why the timing is perfect, because there's new roots coming in case she really throws a fit and dumps all the roots that we've just seen that were kind of good and I was chopping away at them. Second thing is, she's not even gonna do anything at all. I'm not gonna notice that anything has happened. She's back in the exactly the same environment as before. Might not skip a beat. But either way, I think, I think this is a fertilization problem. I did something wrong there. Maybe, like I said, maybe not enough. Uh, maybe something was missing, although MSU is pretty balanced and I use calcium nitrate as well. And I've got another one growth coming right here, so I don't know. I don't know, but we'll see. At least there was nothing in the root system and I'm really happy about that. I don't always need to find a mistake in a root system. I prefer a healthy root system and I'll figure out what else is wrong with her at this point. My last year's growth was perfect. It developed a sheath, but it didn't bloom. So, you know, we'll see. The next one is on its way. So I potted her up, yes, with the back towards the rim of the pot there, but she's more off to this side. So that was because of how the root ball was more dense here. I do have this being able to grow nicely and sit and have plenty of space. But if she then starts to decide to do something on this side, then yeah, we're gonna do this again in a year. Not a problem. It's Lekka, it's inorganic, no biggie. But just in case you are wondering why this weird set and direction of having put the plant in the pot, the side of the root ball was quite condensed and I didn't go take that too aggressively. Most of the brand new roots were actually growing in through there. So that's how it can stay. I have a support in case I need it and I don't need it at this point in time, but there it is. Oh yes, my goodness, and the label. Ha! Rookie error. Come on. Label. It's Schwerter because if there's something that I would like to know is to identify all my Schwerter orchids without having to look into my app. Because if there's something funky and Schwerter, I'm already, I, I've drawn my conclusions. <laughs> okay. Thank you everybody so very much for watching. I really appreciate it. The diva of the Cattleya Alliance by Foliates has been repotted. I have more to do. But here's one example. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you so, so much. I'll see you next time, hopefully. Bye.